Moments that will shock you on paternity court. I took the baby. She came with me. She waited out on out there on the porch. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I had the baby. I said, Mom, who does baby look like? And my mom said, who baby is that? I said, who the baby look like? She said, oh, she don't look like you. Mr. Woods, you are not the father. <gasps> Miss Boyd and Mr. Henderson appear in court to resolve the issue of Regina Boyd's paternity, which her mother says has ruined Regina's childhood. Miss Boyd wants the court to order a paternity test so they can figure out if Mr. Henderson's persuasion of her all those years ago resulted in her pregnancy. You are here asking this court to order a paternity test to prove that Mr. Henderson is Regina's father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Henderson, you say there is no need for a DNA test because it is impossible that you are Regina's dad. Yes, Your Honor. Big Mama testified that she belonged to a very strict family who acted as church pastors. Still, she and Mr. Henderson would pass by her house and flirt with her whenever possible. When she began going out with other men later on, he told her about his interests too, and they actually met up at his house. Like for two years, tried to get at me, and you know, my mother and ran a tight ship because there was pastors of a church. Basically that, you know, I couldn't really get out often to see him. So, you know, like he'll pass by my house or make noise or yell to some, and then I'll notice that, look out the window and notice that it's him and stuff like that, Your Honor. The odd part was that the plaintiff had no idea where the deed went down. However, it all happened so fast that when she got pregnant, she didn't even think it could be Mr. Henderson's baby. And the plot thickens. Oh, I guess I don't know who room it was, but we did it. And Majority, it happened so fast, I didn't even think it could have been his baby. <laughs> that's, what that's what I'm and talking that's about. That's what I'm and talking about. Now, you told the truth right there. But well, hold on, Mr. Okay. Henderson. Okay. Then nobody right. say it gotta be long. Okay. Okay. Or good. Okay. <laughs> you can still make a baby. When Regina was two months old, Mr. Henderson asked Miss Boyd to let him take Regina to his mother's house. She said Mr. Henderson exclaimed, that's his baby. The baby's assumed father was unsupportive. Lee, saying you were also being intimate with somebody else at that time. Exactly. Were you using protection with that person? No. When you got pregnant, did you tell that other man that he could be the biological father yes, of your daughter? Yes, that's why I thought he was the father. And he the one confronted me. You say Mr. Henderson confronted you? Exactly. Regina's growing up without a father gave her a lot of emotional damage. When asked about her assumed biological father, she says she doesn't have any relationship with him, and the constant rejection has made her very tired. She says seeking her siblings spend time with their fathers while she's home alone messes with her. Throughout Regina's childhood, uh -huh. who did you tell her her biological father was? Well, it was um, another um, dude I used to um, mess around with. It was the other man that I thought was her father. Okay, so you told her that man was her biological right. father. Did you ever get a paternity test with that man? Nope. And so you grew up telling Regina, this is your biological father? Yes. The young plaintiff further discussed her encountering Mr. Henderson when he contacted her on Facebook. She said she didn't know who he was, but he said he was her father. She was very surprised by this, but agreed to meet up with him, and they exchanged numbers. After the meetup, she was confused to see there were no calls or texts from him. Well, um, the year 2011, Mr. Henderson contacted me on Facebook saying, I'm your daddy. And then I'm like, is he trying to talk to me? Because he had his cat daddy blue suit on. And I'm like, <laughs> then he went on and said, I used to date your mom. I'm like, oh, OK. Oh, yeah, <laughs> So I, my... <laughs> Mr. Henderson says he didn't think he could be her actual father and was only joking about the possibility. Judge Lauren busts up at him, saying how could he think to joke about something like that with a hopeful young woman? He says he thought she already had a father. Well, looks like only the DNA test can bring the truth out now. Mr. Henderson, you are her father. Whoa. <laughs> You are her father. Mr. Woods and Miss James are in the courtroom because Mr. Woods thought their daughter Addison was biologically his. Miss James says she is not. He has also signed her birth certificate and wishes to resolve the issue regarding paternity because he loves Addison and wishes for confirmation that she is his child. The time Addison was conceived, me and Aubrey slept together. Deep down in my heart, I feel like she's my daughter. I mean, if she's not, it's gonna break my heart. I mean, I've been through everything. I love this girl to death. Like, 
For the past year, I've been there. And you are certain you slept with Ms. James during the window of conception. And I can see from this video in the monitor that she means the world to you. Yes, ma'am. Ms. James says it hurts her to see this situation because she can see Mr. Woods is a great father to her daughter, but she is sure he is not the biological father. Mr. Woods says they met at a party where she was sad about her ex's behavior. He consoled her and they ended up sleeping together thrice. Because I know Cody is a good dad to Addison, but I'm here today to tell them that he is not the father and I did tell him this. So it even hurts you because you know the bond they have established. You know how much Mr. Woods loves Addison. Yes, Your Honor. And you can see she loves him. Yes, Your Honor. But you're saying you have to come here to tell the truth. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> the whole sleeping around started taking a toll on baby mama because she'd allegedly cheated on her boyfriend. However, she soon fell pregnant and called him to say that he was the father. He felt very happy about the news. She felt bad because she cheated on her boyfriend at the time, so we didn't talk about it. And then two months later, I was at work, and that's when she called me and said that she was pregnant and that I was the father. Wow. Did you use protection? No. So when you found out you were pregnant, you immediately called Mr. Woods? Yes, but I told him that he was not the father, that it could be somebody else. Baby mama also told her boyfriend about the pregnancy and told her he might be the father. He didn't want anything to do with her after that. She told Mr. Woods, who accompanied her to doctor's appointments, took care of her when she was sick, and took care of Addison for the first year of her life. So, Mr. Woods, you were there throughout the pregnancy? Yes, Your Honor. Did you also tell your boyfriend that you were pregnant? Yes, Your Honor. But you allowed Mr. Woods to go to all the doctor's appointments? Yes, because my, uh, he did not want anything to do when I told him that I was pregnant, and it possibly could be his daughter. The other guy? Yes, Your Honor. He didn't want anything to do with the baby? No, yes, Your Honor. Mr. Woods was a wonderful father to Addison, but the defendant doesn't want him to be burdened with child support, which is why she will also be getting his name removed from Addison's birth certificate and changing her last name if he is truly not the father. So... What's it gonna be for the little baby girl? Mr. Woods, you are not the father. Him and for you and for Addison. Miss Adams was caught in a love triangle that resulted in the birth of her twins. She had just come out of a 13 year relationship with her ex when she met Mr. Spencer and they began a fling. Soon after, she found herself pregnant with twins. I got caught up in a love triangle because I was with the same man for 13 years. I had separated. When we separated, I had was kind of going through my vulnerable stage and things like that. I had went out actually one day, you know, to the bar, and that's when I had met Marquis. Uh, we started, you know, having dealings with each other and things like that. Miss Adams met Mr. Spencer two months after she broke up with her ex, and they began a sexual relationship. She found out she was pregnant when Mr. Spencer was away and asked a family member to contact him. Both parties agreed on the fact that they did not use protection during their sexual encounters. Were you and Mr. Spencer in a committed relationship? No. You met Ms. Adams. You all have started having a sexual relationship. You didn't use protection. Yes, sir. But yes, you sir. weren't in a committed relationship. No, we weren't. Did you know whether or not at that time she was also intimate with anybody else? No, I didn't. Were you intimate with anybody else during that time? No, I was not. Mr. Spencer spoke to Ms. Adams about it, and she confirmed the pregnancy, and there was no doubt about the paternity of the twins. However, when the twins were born, the pictures got posted to Facebook, which the ex's mother saw. She said the twins look exactly like her son, which is where the paternity issues began. We talked about like her pregnancy, how she got pregnant, how this was possible, how it happened. And she ever tell you there was another possibility? There was someone else who could be the biological father of the twins? No, Your Honor, she never told me that. So you're thinking to yourself, I'm about to be a dad. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Baby mama told the court that her ex's family said she'd had the babies early and they looked like her ex, which means she would have already been pregnant when she met Mr. Spencer. Miss Adams says she was still in love with her ex and used it as an opportunity to get back with him by claiming that the babies were indeed his. You know, she was just telling me, oh, Christian, put two and two together, just think about it. You know, like, it, it don't make sense. You already had the babies early, so you could have been already pregnant when you was messing with Mr. Spencer. You know, she was just, you know, saying things like that and stuff. So then I started saying, well, you know what, you never know. And I was also just going off of emotion and knowing I was still in love with my ex. Mr. Spencer says he first felt suspicious when 
when Miss Adams began sounding distant in her communications to him during her pregnancy while he was away. He says Miss Adams later told him that they did a DNA test and her ex is the father. He still stuck around for the first month after the births. Either you back messing with Mitchell or is something going on because you having an attitude more like you ain't really keeping me up to date with these kids and like it was like, yeah, like I kind of knew this to change so I kind of knew it was like somebody else in the picture. Like it was then, then they uh, it re they told me like, well, we did a DNA test already, Mitchell the father. This is what they told me. Really? Miss Adams' ex's mother, Miss Jernigan, says she felt something wasn't right when she saw the Facebook pictures because she said the pregnancy was too soon after her son's breakup. She says she was often tagged as the baby's grandmother in the photos because she would visit Miss Adams and spend time with the babies. So she sent me the pictures. So I'm like, oh my God. So I went looking for some of Mitchell's baby pictures and I started sending them through the family. And the family's like, oh my God, these Mitchell's uh, babies. So as I talked to Kristen, I'm are you sure? We just left here at the end of December. You said you met Marquis in February. Mr. Spencer and Miss Adams' ex ended up meeting, and they both questioned who the real father is. Her ex was willing to take on full responsibility for these kids, as was Mr. Spencer. However, there's a lot of confusion around. So, can the DNA test results finally reveal the truth? The biological father is Mr. Spencer. The next result is for Kamarian. The biological father is Mr. Spencer. Miss Kayla Beaversdorf opened this case against Mrs. James for allegedly not accepting that Kayla's son, Dakari, is Mrs. James's grandson. She says the lack of acknowledgement from his grandma is affecting her son Dakari's life. You have opened your case against Mrs. James to prove that her deceased son Daryl is the biological father of your four-year-old son Dakari. You say that once you prove paternity, Mrs. James better accept you both or she will never see Dakari again. Kayla wished to be a family, and that cannot happen until their son's paternity is denied. Mrs. James says her behavior was what brought doubt upon Dakari's paternity. When her son and Kayla were dating, they would always be patching up and breaking up. She also disappeared for a few days in between. I want him to, you know what I'm saying, just feel like that's all family, everybody's family, not just my side, not just their side. I want it to be genuine. And I just know once I get these test results, it will be genuine and everybody will really know the truth. I want him to know and to really have proof that that is his father. I'd never want him to doubt that. And I we know- We would not have to have proof if we would not have the doubts. Baby mama and Mrs. James's son were dating for four and a half years while Mrs. James says that isn't true. She says her son introduced Kayla to them, they had a fight, and she left the house for two weeks, and she soon came back pregnant. Kayla says she was staying at her sister's house. When my son came else. to your house, she came outside to talk to him, but she wouldn't let him in the house, and she made him leave. That was my Do you remember that incident, Miss no. Beaversdorf? I know who my baby dad is, I know, and I'm well, just so ready to prove it. How long were you together, you and Mr. Stevenson? Four and a half years. I don't know nothing about four and a half years, Your Honor. Mrs. James told the court that her deceased son told her he was going to stick by that child until he was sure of paternity. He was present for the birth, but left at the time of the signing of the birth certificate. Late baby daddy was hesitant to sign it later on due to the doubts surrounding Dakari's paternity. She says, Mom, until I find out it's not mine, that is what I'm going to stick by her. But if you don't know that that's your child, why are you in the hospital? Why does he have your last because name? Because he loved why you. Why do you the umbilical cord? Why do all that if that's not your child? Did Who he sign that? the birth certificate? No, no, because when the nurse came in, no. he was at home taking a shower, getting clothes. The defendant's entire problem begins with the fact that the young mommy refused to do a DNA test three times. Mrs. James even made appointments, which Kayla refused to show up for. She said she needed a DNA test for confirmation because they couldn't access her son's social security until they had the DNA test results. Well, the simple fact of now I have tried to get DNA three times. She never tried three times. Yes, I, I have, Your Honor. You know why she don't know she about three times? She never tried again no DNA Because she tests. never shows up. We, she never what happened? We know where. We never even had that as I didn't have to be to nowhere. She never I told called. you where she the place was. Anything. Mrs. James says she started this process because she recently took her grandson home with permission from Kayla. But when she extended the stay, Kayla called the police on her. 
She asks Kayla if she's so sure of the paternity, why did she wait over four years to prove it? Once you took the baby to visit when your brother passed away, after all of the issue of bring him back and you said the police was called, you felt like if this is gonna be my grandbaby, I need to have something I that shows know. this is my son's child. Yeah. So it's not like I just went and got somebody's baby. Kayla and Mrs. James then reveal that Kayla actually lives in Mrs. James's house with Dakari. Mrs. James says she will do whatever she can for her grandson because of his circumstances. In fact, she might even fight a legal battle for him if it comes down to that. So, can the DNA test results solve this issue? Percentage of relatedness between Mrs. Jacqueline James and Dakari is 99%. You are related. 